love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. This has become a Trump on, Trump off market. It, it is so dependent on a daily basis on what the president says, what the media is focusing on what the president says, and if agenda will go forward or be stalled. That's the tune right now. That's the temperature of the U.S. stock market. Yes, the fundamental underpinnings were floating around an all-time high because earnings have been extremely strong and robust over the last year. We're well out of an earnings recession into an earnings period of growth in the double digit range. We saw that for the first quarter of 2017. We saw it for the second quarter of 2017. But on at the margin or on a daily basis, the swings of 1% up or 1% down really go back to what the world thinks and Wall Street thinks the president will be able to do. Of course, this week, we're still worried and getting increasingly worried, or markets are getting worried, about the debt ceiling. Will there be a government shutdown in October 2017? Just like we saw in we, we saw the worry of that in September of 2013. So many of the same things, it's almost an identical record that's playing from four years ago. We got very nervous. We were worried about the, the U.S. not extending the debt ceiling. If you don't extend the debt ceiling, the government effectively runs out of money. You get a government shutdown. And then what really worries the world is that we don't pay on our debts. We don't have enough money to pay the interest on the U.S. Treasury note and bonded bill, which is supposed to be the safest, most secure financial asset on the planet. If you don't do that, then you have economic disaster. And even though the probability was relatively low in 2013, it got the attention of markets. And it's going to get the attention of markets again this time around. Because remember, it could always be different. 2013, there was a lot of worry and hoopla. We spent weeks on understanding the Treasury's balance sheet on how long they could actually go without government funding and still be able to pay on the debt. If we get closer to that, as we head into mid to late September, we'll certainly pick that up. But that is right now the, the movie trailer for government shutdown, debt ceiling default. That's all starting to play in the background. And of course, we will keep an eye on that. Again, I don't think it'll happen. We're not going to default on our debt as a country. The media is going to love to run with it. It's going to be a big problem on the surface. But again, ultimately, not going to happen. Doesn't mean the market won't get fearful of it, just like it did in September 2013. Market fell 4%. It's a big number, particularly in a placid market like we've seen because, the, because of the worry. Then everything got straightened out. Fourth quarter 2013, market up 17% as a rally post-government shutdown scare. And we could be headed for that. In the meantime... I talked about this several months ago, and it's starting to really happen. This is the first week I've really seen the Trump tax PR tsunami in full force. And it's exactly why the market rallied this week. So for the, for the week, market's up. And we remember, we've had a couple rough weeks in markets. Finally, this week, up about a half a percent or 0.6 of a percent of Dow Jones, up three quarters of a percent or 0.72 for the S&P 500. Really, the fanfare came when the vernacular started to change towards, hey, we're gonna, get a, we're gonna get some sort of tax reform done. I've told you that in the background, not getting reported on, there's talk and there's more and more agreement and collectiveness around what Congress wants to do and present for tax reform. Monday morning, Grover Norquist, who's known obviously, he's the, the, he's the, the president of Americans for Tax Reform. So kind of a, the leading politician that has led the movement to no longer rate, to never raise taxes if it were up to him, and certainly an advocate for tax reform, which will lower corporate tax, will lower small business tax potentially, will lower your individual tax rate for you and your family. These are, these are gigantic initiatives to try to get through of, of a, a Congress that obviously doesn't get along, and that's an understatement. Well, Monday morning, Grover Norquist was making the rounds on financial news networks. He was on Bloomberg radio for almost a half an hour talking about the progress being made in Washington 
when it comes to getting some sort of agreement. Remember, the internal group that is getting tax reform done or trying to, they have to agree. So just Republicans themselves have to come to agreement on what they want to fully present. Go back a couple of months, there was 60, 65 percent of Republicans were agreeing on on the path to take. According to Grover Norquist, that number's gone up above 90%. So Republicans, which they have to be on the same page if we're going to get tax reform done, are getting collectively closer and closer together on a solution. And just like we've talked about, why did healthcare fail in Congress? Reform failed because there was not a clear plan for, for reform. Here, Congress is working on getting a clear plan that will probably be presented towards the end of September. So we have another approximate month before, according to Grover Norquist, we're going to see the, the, the actual uh, details of a tax reform plan that will then be presented to Congress to get through. And at that point, it will have a very good chance, again, if Republicans can agree on the way or the path to move forward. That's all coming. And the, and the tax reform PR, public relations tsunami that we talked about, it's already started. So you have Grover Norquist at the beginning of the week, very active in the news media. You saw Paul Ryan this week. You're starting to hear more and more about tax reform and that the drumbeat will get louder and louder as we move into September. So that's what's driving markets. When you get the whiff that things, this pro-growth agenda, so lower taxes, tax reform is a pro-growth opportunity. In fact, the CBO that scores these, they use what's called now dynamic scoring, and they will say on an economic basis, we're going to have taken less money initially in the treasury because taxes are lower, but then in a dynamic way, the economy gets better and produces more tax revenue because businesses have better years. They generate more revenue. Consumers spend more money because they have more money in their pockets. And the CBO says that, well, that'll kick in after tax reform begins. And that's what we can look forward to if this happens. So I think it's a really, it's obviously a very important piece of politics right now. It's a, it's a cornerstone of the Trump administration. If it gets through for all the problems and the issues that the Trump administration has had, if tax reform gets through and they can change the conversation to focus in on that, you are going to start to see the market will be taken by surprise to the upside. Because right now there's still this thought that nothing can get passed, all the Trump pro-growth agendas are dead, and I don't think that's gonna be true. And we're gonna continue to keep our eye out on that. A lot has to do with how they handle the messaging on tax reform. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step -step guide, whether in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.